Lisa Simon, RTL Gem Australia. Mm -hmm. um, how many times have you been into, into Germany for, for concerts? Wow, quite a few times. I remember some years ago I did, uh, I think, seven shows around Germany. It was called a Smoking Tour, the oh, Smoking yeah. Whistler Company. That was good. And uh, when, when was that? Mm. Record. Some years ago, we would meet about five years ago. What, what would you think? Uh, how how did the reggae scene um, change for you in Germany, like from from when you've been here the first time until today, the summer gym? Uh, basically, I get the same re same same re reception. It doesn't change much. Uh, well, it's just the same. You know, it's the same jubilant crowd. Yeah. You know feeling good because they're hearing some new songs that they can relate to. You know, it's been this way for a long while, wow. across Europe. But uh, do you think like uh, interest got bigger and the crowd got bigger as well? Like people are, um, are more aware of uh, what reggae and uh, rasta is all about? Yes, I would say that. I would say that. You can tell from the reaction of some of the songs, like um, Warren Above and yeah, Chase yeah. the Devil. You can see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. In um, 1992, um, Prodigy used the lines of uh, Chase the Devil in their song Out of Space. Mm -hmm. Did they um, contact you before about uh, using it, or did you did you know about that before they um, released it? No, sadly, um, it was a few years after that I realized what was happening. Um, but they had good intention, I could imagine, but maybe not knowing where to contact me. Yeah. You know, because I'm not easily fine, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was good. I, I appreciate it very much, you know. Yeah, it was a good thing for me. So do you, do you like that song or was, was it not, not Well, it's a little weird. I mean, the, the, the real, at the time, I didn't understand garage music. You yeah. Know, after a while, I get to understand it. It was okay, you know. But first hearing it was, mm, you know, hey, you know. What's this? You know, they yeah. start listening. I did. It's very infectious. You know that song. Yeah. But I think, uh, like, because people like that prodigy song, and they were wondering where that line came from, so they get more asked, started asking questions, and say, "Oh, thanks for me," mm -hmm. and then got maybe more interest into into reggae music. So yeah. Can, you know, it's probably. It's a good thing. I appreciate it very much. You know, really appreciate them doing it. You know, but it's a message. That should be reached, you yeah. know, to the people. We gotta get rid of Satan out of our life, you know. Exactly. Yeah, and um, they just help to spread a message. Also, Jay Z, he did a thing with Lucifer as well from the oh, same yeah. sample. Yeah. And there are quite a few other artists. Um, there's a German group who did it as well. I can't remember the name of that group. There's a group from um, from Israel. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's quite a few. Yeah. Do you get paid when they use a sample like that? Yeah, I got my publishing. <laughs> I got my publishing. Publishing. My publishing. My publishing. Publishing. Yeah, because the song is mine, so. You get money for publishing. Yes. Yep. Oh, copyright. And that's the copyright, and that's a major part of the money, so yeah. Yeah. You know. That's where the money comes in. Can I ask you a question about your dreams? Um, from the same area, like from Mali? Yeah. How do you, is it naturally in Jamaica that you come to reggae music? Uh, did you have any contact with any artists like Bob Marley when he was young? Or um, how did it start for you, the, the career or the, the, your introduction to reggae music? Well, I came in the business more of a writer than a singer. But obviously I couldn't find no one to, to sing my song because they feel that my, my, my lyrics are a little weird. They didn't understand roots and culture. You know, and, and what's happening? Because I sing about what's happening, you know, things like that. So I end up up to sing myself, you know. And uh, the first, the first place I went was um, Studio One, and um, I was auditioned by BB Seaton from the Gaylords, and he figured that I wasn't ready. And the same day, I went to another company, a small label, downtown Kingston. The guy liked the song, and we did it. It was very successful. That was my first song. I'll buy you a rainbow, along with um, we call ourselves the emotions, the two other guys. And it was number two on both charts at the time. And right away, that's how my career was launched. <laughs> and when did that uh, international success came? Uh, 
Uh, this was 1960, 1967. Mm -hmm. um, 1969 was uh, when I first started touring with a big hit in England called Wet Dreams. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 that was in the British chart for 26 weeks. And um, never played on the radio. No. You know, when, you, when I come on top of the pops, they would say, this week in number nine is this record from this guy. And yeah. they put a picture and you know, that was it. Yeah, yeah. 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 sorry. Yeah. And um, coming back to these days, um, you're performing in Europe on big festivals, but also back home in Jamaica, or is that um, something? How do you compare um, these two? Yeah, crowds or the concerts. Is it, is it different? Is it a different vibe? Or what would you say? Well, I would say it's a little different. Uh, um, the music scene in Jamaica is, uh, is changed. It, it has changed over the years. They introduced a new music called Dancehall. Mm. And um, the people are in the middle of um, accepting Dancehall. And therefore, uh, roots and culture music is like a little on the back burner, you know? But it's still there, but it's not as heavy as the dance hall. Well, I, I do work in, in Jamaica when they do shows with vintage artists like myself, because my music don't go with the dance hall thing. It's two different crowds, you know. Yeah, and, uh, I you know, yeah, you know. Luciana tried to do that and get stoned, you know. Bonnie Whalers tried to do that and get stoned. It's, 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 <laughs> it's a different thing, you know. You gotta let it have to do. Now the people are trying to come back to the roots and culture, so yeah. they're embracing it with, with, with these little young artists um, that comes now into the roots and culture thing. So it's actually finding its way back into yeah. the mainstream. And do you, do you see that critical, or do you say, yeah, do it? Like, like PC Signal performing right now, he yeah, has a reggae album this year, mm -hmm. um, Chronics doing both. Reggae and dance, or yeah. you say is that a good thing, or are you a bit skeptical about the new reggae revival? I think it's a good thing. I mean, music is music, so if they can merge, it's okay. But when they segregate and divide and rule, and you know, you're not able to handle the industry because there's not a big market out here for it. So you know, it's just a fad, you know, and um, that, that, that's that, that's what's happening really. You have a new album too, and we are waiting on it. So what's going on with your new album now? Well, I, 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 I withdrew the concept on the advice of my, my kids. Of which I, I, I thought I finished the album. I was called the last hurrah because I figured I wasn't going to do another album. And then uh, my two boys entered the music business and they started questioning me on it. They said, but dad, Frank Sinatra was 80-something when he died. You're just in the 60s. What are you talking about, last hurrah? We're going to change the whole concept, change the whole album, and we call it the love of money, the root of all evil. It's clear concept. The love, not money. The love of money, the root of all evil. <laughs> so they changed the whole concept. So I'm back on the drawing board. Hopefully, I can get me up by the Christmas. Sorry about that. What is that record? You have your own studio over there, so? Yeah, we have um, the Charmax Music Studio. What is that? It's a recording studio. It's called the Red Arc. It's an offspin from the Black Arc. Oh, okay. And that's where um, a, a few artists um, got the break from there. One I can recall, Ibermark. Oh, he's, he's, oh, Ibermark. He, he's doing a good on the. Uh, that's Black where he get his start. You'll hear about him soon because he's Ibermark. Oh, yes. Ibermark. Oh, yeah, yes. yes. You got a little touch of that old Jacob Miller type of. Yeah, he's him singing like yeah. Jacob Miller. No, not like Jacob Miller. He's got a little touch. Okay. Of that, yeah. And he's recording in the Red Dog Studio in yeah, your he, he, yeah, studio yeah, yeah. now. That's right. That's, oh, cool. that's where he got his break. That's the that first song he released, and it was very good. That was recorded in your own studio. In my studio, yeah. Okay. My album was made in my studio as well. Oh. I tried to create about that black art thing that. I missed and the world missed, yeah? Yeah, man. <laughs> That's good. Uh, can I ask you what do you think of the Snoop Lion's conversion to Fairy Tale? Well, I think it's good. Another soldier come across the border, you know, coming at the house of Rastafari. I mean, welcome Snoop Lion, you yeah. know? Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> but there's been a lot of criticism about it.
Judge not, else he be judged. Who am I? Who are you <laughs> to judge? Let give him his break. He said, Rasta. I want the world to say Rasta. Yes. So if Snoop Dogg become a lion and say Rasta, yes. who am I to judge? I can't deny him the fact. Well, I mean, Remember, I Saul. Mean, what, Well, I still say judge not, uh, 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 you know, judge not. Yeah, not the judge. Yeah, that's the way it is. You know, I think, uh, you know, Rasta is an open well, thing. Pardon? Right. Yeah. What do you say? He said that um, he, he's not really keeping his like, commitments and it's all verbal. I don't think he would know that. The guy just come into the arena, watch him for a while and see what he do. Rasta is a personal thing. We don't have no temple anywhere where we worship. Wherever one or two of us are gathered, we show Rastafari and that's the way it is, you know. It's, it's not a religion, it's a lifestyle, my love. Rasta is a lifestyle. We shy away from divide and rule. We don't divide and we don't rule. We unite and come together, yeah? That's what it is, yeah. So if Snoop Dogg embraced the faith, it's just one more soldier in, in, in the fold, you know. Welcome Snoop Dogg. I mean, Snoop Lion, pardon. Yeah. So, what are your plans uh, after Summer Jam? Are you going on a tour or are you going back to Jamaica to produce? Well, what happened? I was resting and all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, that my, my good friend Ken Bulls canceled his tour and my agent had problems, so they called me up. I said, hey, I'm on the beach, what's up? <laughs> Come do some work. What are you, a couch potato? Get out of here. Can you, can you feel it? I said, gladly. What are you talking about? This is summer jam. <laughs> so, all the days that Ken Bode was supposed to do, I'm doing them, you know. Yeah. I don't know why he's not here. It's just that he's not here. And the, the gap needs to be filled, you know. And they call me, and I'm available. So, give thanks to Rastafari, you know. So, what kind of direction you see the music industry heading right now? Well, it's like a horse with his feet um, broken and it's all spleened up now together, so it's hopping. Um, soon, it might be healed, it, it will be able to run again. Well, because I study a lot about music, yeah, and you is a veteran within the music, yeah, and you are coming from where it started, mm -hmm. actually, yeah? Mm -hmm. and I would like to go back to that time. What do you think is the solution? Mm. The solution is um, better lyrics. Uh, let's get back some hearts beating in the studio again instead of that computer board, you know, and the rhythm is already made. Like music. Good. We like to want the hearts beating in the studio again, the bass talking to the drummer and the guitarist and the um, horns come later and overdub, then the artists come listen and say yeah, then you overdub, then we mix and we have a music. Right now it's and a guy saying some things, you know. Well, I am a personalist on the internet, yeah? And I was actually looking at something with this guy. His name is Bongo Herman. Yeah. His man, I should say, sorry, call him a guy. Um, Bongo Herman. Does Bongo Herman ever play on any uh, music you see, like really much and stuff like that? Yeah. Every knee shall bow on the, on the, um, the observer, the observer label. Yeah. A song called um, Every Knee Shall Bow. Okay. He played, he played a, a chimney on that. You too? <laughs> you too? Yes. Yeah, yeah. on the ob right. observer label. Watching these guys. Yeah. Are you about a new studio where we really opened in Kingston? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah? No, uh, this is long time ago, oh, Observer, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Recording at the Dynamic Studios, Byron Lee Studios, yeah. where he used to do his, his recordings. Yeah? So, how, is, how important is reggae music to, uh, for radio? Because they're saying there's a, a lot of disc jockeys. Disregard regular music and play dance 
because um, of the payola situation. Dance all over that money, yeah? Don't ask me how they get it, but they got a lot of money so they can pay payola but you for them to beat that thing in the ears every day. You know, you got two different sides of the border. In Europe, you get more reggae music, mm -hmm. but over the Atlantic, you get more dance art. Comes back to payola. Once you, you beat it in the ear, it's gonna leave Jamaica, but how far does it go? You know? Um, but that, I mean, that's my theory. You know, uh, I, I can't give a DJ 100,000 US dollars, man. I got kids in university and kids in college, you see? So I don't get played because I don't pay. Yeah, that seems to be the culture <laughs> for all, like Jamaica and stuff like that because uh, sad to say yeah because i once uh, interviewed property and he said that uh, the reggae music is slowly leaving jamaica and the likes of the swings the denmark are picking up on the rhythm europe in general europe in general yeah. so europe is like it's come out of jamaica and gone to europe and, yeah it's different what, sorry it, what, what happened now reggae has become a, a refugee so you get refugee status in europe so Europe have it an old and you were ready for it again. On a serious note. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I would like to say, do you think the real roots rock reggae, like from rock steady days, that root will really leave Jamaica? That's what we're discussing now, isn't it? Yeah. It's left yeah. Jamaica. Indeed. Right. I, I watched in Jamaica. Boop, boop, tick, boop, yeah. boop, tick, boop. Gallus, man, gallus, gallus. That was one one still half of Jamaica. Right. Back then. Yep. And still it is. And it's slowly leaving the arena. Uh well, it's not completely, you know. Like I say, it's a refugee, so it it, it, it it obtained refugee status in Europe. When we get back together again, then they're gonna say because let's face it, in reggae you got songs, yeah? In dance hall you got rhythm. People want to hear sounds. They want to hear either the cry of the poor or the rejoicing of the rich. But they want to hear something. They want to hear sounds. And that's what dancers don't have, really. Sounds, you know. This little one that's in, you know, about, um, uh, what's his name again? Uh, you know, these, these type of songs are coming back around again. Remind me of when I just started because, you know... Let's go back to when you started. What's your highlight in your career? Because obviously your career is extended from the early days. But what, what could be your highlight of your career if you, if you track back and just say I had good times back then? Mm. Artists, producers? I don't know. I mean, maybe, you know, working with Lee Perry, yes. Uh, those were really good days, you know, because then, you know, you got to have your head on when you, you work with Lee Perry. You know, you, you don't want to record no crap. It have to be appropriate. So those days was actually my learning stage, you know. And it worked for me, working with people like Bonnie Lee, you know, and all these guys. It, it, it actually get you ready. You know, these are kindergarten days, yeah? yeah. Now you got to go to university, you got to come out here. That's, here's where you prove yourself. But going through the process of reggae music, you must have, somebody must have inspired you and said, you know, that artist, I like that. Which, which artist was that? Derek Morgan. Derek Morgan inspired yeah. you? Yeah, he's, he's all of us, um, grandfather and this thing. He, he, yeah, he, me personally, he, he inspired, you know, from them days. Yeah, he gave me his rhythm, but I did Red Dream. But I, I made money, I make a name for me. Yeah, yeah. I up, so what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a, it's a, I think with your, your quite a high career in the reggae industry, your, your albums, that they always live on. Um, you could always backtrack on the catalogs. And that in itself is a test of time. Yeah, I like to be original, uh, you know, I sell them. I do other people's song, but I have to be in love with it. <laughs> like a song I sing from, from Charlie Pride called I'm Nobody's Child. Just like a film going wild. Takes me back to my early days when I was a runaway kid living in the streets of Kingston, yeah? And I'm proud to say, I get educated at Sidewalk University, Kingston University. I, 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 I'm bigger than Eaton. I'm doing well. So which Better than if I went to bloody Eaton. 
Yeah, but which producer got the best of the Max Room? Ah, Lee Perry. What was so special about Stretch? He's a genius, man. Don't let him fool. He ain't no madman. He's one of the wisest guy I know in my time. You know, he makes money out of madness, and he's I'm saying it to than me and you. He's a very good businessman, very sane, but he plays a charade. You know, I'm a madman. I'm a madman. A bear. He really means it. He's telling a bear. He's taking the mick. <laughs> uh, what I want to say is that now I think by listening to, because I listen mostly to culture, yeah? Mm -hmm. I listen to dance all sometimes, depends on but culture is my favorite. Mm -hmm. And now I can see that you have some nice artists rising in yeah, this man. time, Probably in this era too. right now, yeah. like Jesse Ryle, Mark Bamari, you speak yeah. of him earlier on. Mark and Derek is still a well, eh? In your studio and your label and support them. Yeah, you have like Protege mm -hmm. and support um, Janine. Yeah. A lot, of, yeah, Kappa, Kappa Pyramid. Uh, back on track, we're back on track. Yeah, so I'm kind of like the flavor right now. So what do you think? I like you it too. Find it back in Groove. Or yes, as I'm saying, I'm, I'm listening to a few of these new guys and they're actually switching now back to reality, you know. They become realists now. Yeah, because one time it was like being a bounty cartel, uh, yeah. video, 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 is you sick? So we try to put the M back in, eh? <laughs> so we have to go to it after because okay. we're closing. Well, All right. I'm my pleasure meeting you and mm -hmm. having a chat with you. Okay. Welcome to Europe and continue to join our revolution. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Glad to be here as well. Make a All shout right. out. Thank you, man. Thank you. Very Make much. a shout out to some of you. Sound boy TV, sound boy. Yo, Sound Boy TV, Max Show me say what? Hold them, don't let them go. Rastafari. <laughs> <laughs>